How would it feel to reduce stress and understand yourself better? That's what our next guest, Ines Andrade, does. She's a vocal and sound healer that helps people connect deeply with their heart, passion, and purpose through voice. You won't want to miss this episode. There's a lot of great nuggets in there. Welcome to the Courage to Be podcast. I'm your host, Tanya Vasayo. And each week, I will bring you amazing guests so that you can tap into the courage to break out of all patterns and live your soul's purpose. Before we get into this episode, if by the end you enjoyed it, please follow, rate, review, and share the podcast so we can reach more people. Because here's the thing, I'm on a mission to close the gender gap in the podcasting world so that more and more women's voices are heard. If you feel that this is something you value too, then please take action by rating, reviewing, following, and sharing the podcast. We can only do this together. Check out the link in the show notes to see how this is done. And make sure to stay until the end to claim some free gifts I have for you. Welcome, everyone. We have Ines Miracle here with us. And Ines, what are you drinking today? <gasps> I am drinking Earl Grey. Oh, I do yes. love Earl Grey in the afternoon. Yeah. Love it. Yes. Cheers to Cheers. our t- afternoon tea. Yes. So Ines, tell us a little bit about your journey, who you are, what do you do to help people? What do you do? What do you put out into the world? Well, I have been focused on voice for many years. And I think my journey with voice started after being in movement for 25 years. I was a teacher and and working with movement and things started to happen. So it was a very surprising and catalytic moment when I kind of opened to my own voice. And there were sounds that were kind of undefined, like, where is this coming from? And so I did some research on my ancestry and realized that in in doing those sounds, I was able to reconnect with my ancestors' messages. So basically, I become like this kind of psychic reader. So instead of using a, a crystal ball, I would use, you know, some toning, connecting with the person's date of birth and their their name, specifically the the sound of their name would connect with kind of their cosmic address and, and, and I would receive information through sound. So the journey started about 2007 and then consolidated in 2011. And I started to do sound readings for people and, and sound healing. So also bringing in my own ancestors sound and kind of light codes. So I call light codes more of the languages from celestial origins. And so those two, you know, to connect with our ancestry from from planet Earth and then our line this way. And then the celestial kind of energies of healing would bring a lot of transformation in people. So I realized that not only one on one individual sessions would help, but also group sessions. So then I also did some experiments with drumming and and different objects and, and definitely alchemical crystal balls, which are really heart opening. So, yeah. That I just have to add to it because I've witnessed some of your work. I definitely want to witness more. I've done the When you said the names, I remember when I did the session with you and just having me sing out loud my name and then you playing the drum around it was amazing experience. And you've also performed your work in our live events. I remember going through that and how powerful that has been too. So anyone that's listening to this, highly, highly suggest that you try out a session with Ines and see what, be open, see what shows up for you, because there is something powerful about your voice, about sound and bringing all of this together. And you said that it started with movement. I've also seen you perform live here in Santa Fe, which I remember 
it was all the dancers that came out and your performance really stood out to me. I remember you dressed all in white and you were, you know, it was like this abstract dancing and I really appreciated it. So you're just bring, bringing all these memories to me that I'd forgotten about, Ines. So thank you for that. And as you were speaking about ancestry, tell us where you're from. So I'm originally from France and I'm also half Venezuelan. So my, my mother is French and my father is from Venezuela. And so the indigenous roots from my father kind of colliding with more of the European, very stylish background that I feel like this fusion and collision of like really wild and in nature and kind of shamanic background with the more educated and refined, refined sophisticated fusion was really challenging to kind of hold when I was a child. And so I think that many gifts were suppressed. But then everything started to open up as I used dance as my primary expression. And so the, the body really holds so much wisdom and, and the power of the voice is absolutely incredible. So I feel like bringing a little bit of that background, South American and French, they're honoring both in the same way. So I also do French cabaret singing, which I'm really passionate about. So to honor both sides really allowed me to find a balance. That is beautiful that you're saying that because I was going to ask you, I like inquiring, you know, what do you consider are your superpowers? But it seems like you've been very in tune to these superpowers, you know, of voice, of your tribal, more shamanic, you know, natural nature connection and the sophisticated side and blending both of them. Would you say there's, um, besides voice and movement, that there's another superpower within you or that you are good at something very specific within that world of the voice and movement? Yes, I feel like I have really agreed to be conduit for healing through these ancestral sounds. And when I feel that there is collaboration and more of a teamwork, that's where those sounds actually amplify and magnify. So superpowers, yes, it's really to emphasize also the gifts of others through the support of the voice. So I think voice is in the middle as the gem, the superpower, but it encompasses so many things, right? It's the voice of your truth and the voice of your passion, of the reason why you are here. So it's not only the singing voice, but it's also the true voice nature. Thank you for, for pointing that out, because I remember for anyone that's listening to this, when you told me about the kind of work you did, I was intrigued, I was curious, but I was scared at the same time, because I never considered myself someone that has a good voice, you know, like that was always kind of like put down, like, oh, you sing horrible, you know, like kind of comments. And I'm sure other people can relate to that you know, like, oh, I just don't have a good singing voice. And I just want to emphasize here that it is the work that Ines does is not about polishing this voice. Or if you're, if you're scared that you never sang, you know, well, or you were told that you had a horrible singing voice, or you've told yourself that story and that narrative, it goes so much further and beyond voice, how we see it, like, oh, you know, she's maybe a voice teacher or a voice coach, you know, like it has nothing to do with this. I mean, it could have, if you wanted to, I'm sure Ines could help you with that, but it just goes so much deeper, like you're saying, into ancestry and connecting to your true self. And mm -hmm. I don't want to go deeper, but if you have curiosity, definitely connect with Ines. And I wanted to ask you, 
when since we're talking about our voice and in order to find our voice and to tap into that voice it I believe it requires courage at least it did for me to do a session with you what when I say the word the courage to be and fill in the blank what comes to mind to you for me it's courage to be in love and yeah and in love it is about being in love frequency so every time kind of checking where i am at i am i in fear am i in love am i resisting something so kind of keeping my love vometer you know and the reason also is when i was creating my card basically i received a message that i needed to to write love advocate and i was like oh that's kind of a bit ostentatious to put love advocate what does that mean so that question started to really elaborate into what my work is about really and bring those frequency alive so yes so when you talk about ancestors is also to transmute the wounding that has mm. been passed on with these blockages that we have that are connected to stories that our ancestors carried and passed on. Mm -hmm. We're we're working with that and the courage to be in love and and practice the voice of love. This is it. I love that. That's beautiful. Tell me about someone that you have impacted this week and vice versa or recently. Well, yes, there there was a lady that came and she's in her 80s and she really felt energy moving, but more of the ancestors watching the work that we were doing together and just that help, that support that is unseen to be palpable in the space made a, a huge difference. Wow, yes. that's great. And then... Yeah. And- I love that you said that she was a woman in her 80s. See, there's always room to have impact on someone and to receive some type of help, support at any age. You know, sometimes we feel like, oh, I'm too old, I'm too young. We fill in these these blanks. How did someone impact you this week, Ines? Well, a friend of mine, her name is Jeannie, and she's a transformative coach. And I felt like she really got a breakthrough, you know, within my my own kind of an ancestral repercussions and what I was maybe unconsciously recreating. And there was a clear breakthrough with her support. Yes, so I feel like sisterhood right now is really on the stove, the front burner. Yes. I love that. I love that you're saying it because that's the whole purpose of when I started these, you know, shorter conversations within our Facebook group that now are dropping as episodes in the podcast that what would you like to get out of this community? You know, as we gather together beside, you know, within this sisterhood, what, what are some things you want to get out of it? Well, I would love for one to have more connection with collaborators, people that love to collaborate and create beauty. And yes, maybe a special collaboration with another person that is also within the healing realm in a different way and kind of collaborating with sound. So offering sound to maybe a different medium of of healing love that is there anything in particular besides looking for collaboration in these areas that you're looking for support right now like are you looking i don't know for a specific type of clients or you're promoting a workshop or you're promoting something else or you're looking for a va or yes sure a va would be fabulous because that's something that hasn't been my forte to be out and so it's more word of mouth you know so someone that would help me promote this work would be fabulous because i feel like there is a lot of benefit right now specifically that everything is so confusing to to go back to center Mm, i love that yeah yes and the true voice 
Yes. So I would say that there, there will be, there will be something I'm, I'm actually really proud of. I just finished the recording of an online class uh, that is about the, the voice of your truth. And so uh, my friend Susanna Dumet, who was part of a, a healing trio of voices that I was part of, and I'm still part of, but we are in different states. So we created this beautiful course online to, to kind of explore more of what it means to be in our true voice. And so this will be coming up, but not yet. We just finished Yay, perfect. the recording. So, so we'll, that- we'll put it in the notes. Perfect. Mm-hmm. And as we're wrapping yeah. up, I always like asking this, what's a great book you're reading right now or a podcast that you like or music, you know, you're into voice. Is there particular sounds or music that you like listening to? Yeah, so there is a, a band that's called Yaima and it's Y-A-I-M-A. They are really good friends of ours, a duet and really beautiful music. And then this is my favorite book, The Process from Michael Brown. And as you see, there's a lot of stickers and things because it's really a self inquiry and a very deep process. So I do that as a kind of a cleansing ritual, you know, sometime. Yes. So repeating, kind of a repeating self inquiry. Awesome. Thank you so much for both of those. I'm going to look up the the duet as well as the book. I always like book recommends, but I feel like most of us tend to recommend books, but we're not recommending sounds, you know, like songs that we like or bands or music that we might have been listening to. So I really appreciate that recommend. I want to take a look at it. Well, thank you so much, Ines, for being with us today and for sharing your energy. You know, it's just so calming. I can feel the energy already. So thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. I am so grateful that you joined me today. If you enjoyed it, there's one thing I'd like you to do. Click on the follow button so you don't miss a single episode. Leave me a rating and a review and please share. As my way to thank you, Email us a screen grab of your review at the email in the show notes, and we will send you a free Crafting Your Future guided visualization, which is so simple to do with outstanding results. It will empower you and give you the confidence to attract and create the life you've always desired. See you in our next episode.